speaking of nefarious activities, uh, Mark Keith Robinson is going to be joining us. Before we do that, I'm going to play his rant from yesterday on Facebook concerning child exploitation. Uh, there was a myriad of things that I wanted to talk about over the last few days. Uh, I was trying to come, uh, trying to been trying to come to you live uh, every Monday and Thursday, but uh, this past Monday and Thursday, this past Thursday, I had an event. I was out of town speaking, and this past Monday, I was at a a Christmas party, a uh, very nice Christmas party given by a very influential uh, gentleman here in Greensboro. Had a fantastic time. Was honored to be invited. Uh, saw some old friends. Uh, saw some some new friends. Just it was great. We met my wife and I. We had a fantastic time. So that's why I what did not do a live those two days because, like I said, I was uh, was in other places. I was gonna wait till tomorrow to do a live, but I changed my mind because there's something really pressing. Uh, weighing on my mind pretty heavy. Uh, discussed it with a couple of friends already. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to get right into it. Now, folks, if you don't see me on Facebook for 30 days, it's because I've got banned. I've gotten banned. But quite frankly, this issue to me is so important that, I, that Facebook, if they want to ban me for saying what I'm about to say, they can feel free to ban me because somebody needs to say it. Uh, some years ago, number of years ago, I, I left my home church over an issue uh, where uh, a pastor made some comments uh, that I vehemently disagreed with on the issue of homosexuality. Um, and I, I left my home church. And at that, that time when I left, I told my wife, I told her that the end game of those who were pushing this so-called sexual revolution in this country, that one of their end games was to get their hands on children, legalized pedophilia. And uh, I told uh, some co-workers that some years ago. And I, I, I truly believed it in my heart. I believed that God had revealed that to me. Uh, certainly not calling myself a prophet. Uh, but in my times alone and in my times of reflection and in my times of prayer, uh, certainly God has spoken to me and, and he, he's told me and he's let me know that uh, the sexual revolution, that the so-called sexual revolution in this country and in this world is nothing more than a slippery slope. And now when we say, and when we say slippery slope, let me get something straight. People call the slippery slope, they call it a theory. It is not a theory. If I have a, 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 a slope that has, that is lubricated and I push something down that, that lubricated slope, it is going to move much quicker, much faster. It, it, it's going to go down that hill if I push it down that hill. We just had a big snowstorm here. Uh, our hill leading to our neighborhood was a slippery slope. We could not get up. And I guarantee you, had you been at the top and come down too fast, you would not have stopped. So the slippery slope is not a theory. It is a principle. It exists. And we can see it happening in this country morally. Now, the end, what I'm talking about is this, and I'm going to get directly to the point of what I'm talking about. I saw some months ago the most disgusting video that I have ever seen in my life. I saw, I think he was maybe nine or, or 10 years old at the time, a 10-year-old boy twerking in Speedos surrounded by a bunch of grown men on a public street. Now, you think about that. A scantily clad, prepubescent boy dancing in a sexually suggestive manner surrounded by a bunch of grown men. And nobody stopped it. And in fact, celebrated the video. It, 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 it went viral. People are watching this and lauding this, this obvious, this obvious celebration of the sexualization of children. Now, how, you, how sick is that? And now to see that this child at the behest of these perverted and sick adults is being lauded as some type of drag queen. Or this is supposed to be some type of inclusiveness. Are you kidding me? You drag a prepubescent child into the demented and hypersexual world drag queen world and put him on stage in front of grown men in women's clothing 
sex, this is highly sexual women's clothing and promote this as some type of inclusiveness or promote this as some type of celebration of diversity. What type of diversity are these people reaching out for? What type of diversity are you reaching out for? The rape of children? Is that what you're reaching out for? And let me make something clear. When I talk about this issue, I am not talking about homosexuals. Because when I read the article about this, this young boy being put on stage in this club, there were homosexuals in that nightclub that were disgusted and walked out. So it's not, this is not about homosexuals. This is about people who are pushing a perverted agenda on our youth and on the minds of our youth for the purposes of corrupting them so they can put their hands on them legally. That's what this is about. It is about the sexualization of children. And it's not homosexuals are not the only ones that are involved in this. In fact, I put it to you, did put it to this to you. The main ones who are pushing this, this agendas appear not to be homosexuals. We just saw on Good Morning America just today or yesterday. Sometime this week, they had um, Michael Strahan and the rest of those idiots ran a story about this young boy being put on stage and being lauded as some type of uh, progressive hero because he's involved in this hypersexual world of the drag queens. Now, how sick is that? How sick is that? Would we would we allow? Would we allow a prepubescent girl to go on stage at the strip club dressed up like a grown woman? Would we allow that? Absolutely not. Would we allow these, a bunch of straight men to stand around and throw dollars at an 11-year-old girl as she danced suggestively on a stage in a strip club? Absolutely not. This thing has gone absolutely too far. And if I sound upset, it's because I am upset. And like I said, if Facebook wants to ban me because of that, so be it. Part of the problem in this country is this, folks. We don't understand. Too many people do not understand. This is not a this part of this fight that we're in here is not a, it's not about politics. It's not about who we vote in office. It's not about uh, uh, Democrats and Republicans. This is about good and evil. It is about God and Satan. And it is high time that Christians in this country stand up and start proclaiming the truth and stop being afraid to proclaim the truth because somebody might call them some filthy name. We have the ultimate example of courage in Jesus Christ to follow. Now, for you folks out there looking at me and say, oh, he's preaching, he's preaching, he's judging, he's judging. Yes, sir, I'm doing both. And if you don't like it, feel free to cut me off, unfriend me, block me, whatever you want to do. Because I can tell you one thing right now. There's one thing, and I talk a lot about politics on Facebook, but there's one thing that is paramount to everything, to politics and everything else on this planet, and that is our eternal souls. It is more important to me to see one person saved from the pit of hell than it is to see a thousand, a million, a hundred million turned around politically. Because without that change of heart that changes you and keeps you from being, keeps your soul safe from hell, there is no repentance. It doesn't matter who you vote for. It doesn't matter how you vote. It doesn't matter what kind of beliefs you have here on this earth. If your soul is not rooted in the belief of Jesus Christ and you do not submit to him and call and call him your Lord and Savior, you are headed for hell. And we can see that that's what's happening. It is sad that so many pastors around this country have become so jelly and so weak and will allow the abuse of these children, will allow, allow their minds to be twisted, allow their minds to be uh, uh, pulled away from the truth because they're afraid. They're afraid to stand up and proclaim the truth. Well, I'm going to tell you what, folks, I'm not afraid to stand up and proclaim the truth. And I'm not I'm not ashamed of it either. And anybody that does not like it, I'm going to say this again. If you do not like the stand I'm taking on this, find that unfriend button and get off my page because you're going to find some hard truths coming because abusing these children is dead wrong. 
You want to be whatever you want to be? Go in your bedroom, close your door, do whatever you want to do. Consenting adults have the right to do whatever they want to. Our, our Constitution gives them that right. And, and quite frankly, Jesus Christ died on the cross to set them free so they could choose to do whatever they want to do. If they don't choose to follow him and want to follow along with this homosexual lifestyle or whatever kind of lifestyle, feel free. But you need to do it with consenting adults. And you need to keep your hands off of these children. Because I can tell you this right now, and I've said this several times and I'm going to say it again. As long as this country, as long as this nation continues to sow these seeds of perversion, we're going to reap a whirlwind and a harvest of, of, of pure horror. You better believe it. We keep twisting these children's minds up, rape, allowing these children to be raped both undercover and in our faces. And those children are going to grow up to be absolute monsters. They are going to be monsters that are going to do unspeakable things. You think about this, all you people out there to support these, these agendas, this homosexual agendas. I put it to you this way. You see, I'm a, I'm a child of the 1970s. We used to laugh with a wink and a nod about homosexuality. We used to laugh with a wink and a nod about drug abuse. And a wink, we used to laugh with a wink and nod, a nod about adultery and fornication. See, we used to laugh at that stuff, and we used to hear the preacher say, you shouldn't be in the nightclubs acting the fool. You shouldn't be out here drinking, drugging, having, oh, he's just old fuddy duddy. You know, you got to live your life a little bit. We, li we tolerated that with a little wink and nod. And now what are we doing? We got older, and we realized the way. We realized the truth. And we're fighting against those things now. The folks that are fighting, that are supporting these agendas right now, they're going to be the same way when they get older. It's the same way. I pray to God that none of these people, when they get to be my age, these young people out here that are supporting these agenda, when they get to be my age, they don't wake up one day and find themselves in the conundrum of their grandchild of 15 or 13, 14, 15-year-old grandchild marrying a 45-year-old man, and there's nothing they can do about it. Because that's where we're headed, folks. You better believe that's where we're headed. All this so-called inclusiveness and diversity. I told somebody else this. The very next human right coming down the pike is going to be pedophilia. We're going to change pedophilia from a sickness, and it's going to become a, a, a just another way that people, you know, it's just another way that people express themselves sexually. And we have to let, we have to give them their space, and we can't be bigoted against them. Not on my watch, folks. Not on my watch. You put your hand on the children, you are sicko. You are sick. And everybody, from Michael Strahan all the way down, that have, has to the parents, everybody, that has anything to do with the sexualization of that young boy, you, have, you practically have blood on your hands and you have something to answer for. Because I can tell you this right now, and this is the last thing I'm going to say about this issue. All of us sin and come short of the glory of God. We all sin. We've all committed grievous sins. Every one of us. There's not one person listening to this that has not sinned. But here's what everybody has not done. All of us have not freely promoted sin as right and evil as good. We have not done that. And the people that do that, they can count themselves as agents of the devil. And they are putting their souls at risk for doing so. So, folks, we got to stop being afraid to stand up and say, speak the truth because it, it is up to us to protect our future generations. And right now, our future generations are at risk. And they're at risk from these people that want to progress into this new form of uh, inclusion, which is going to apparently include child rape. Like I said, I'm not going to be quiet about it. I'm going to speak up about every chance I get. So, and I'm encouraging each and every one of you all to do the same thing. Uh, like I said, Facebook might not like this message, but I don't care. You could ban me from Facebook all you want to. Jesus Christ spread his message all across the globe, and he didn't need Facebook to do it. And we don't need Facebook to spread his gospel today and to tell the truth. The truth will be told whether Facebook wants it told or not. So, <laughs> Facebook, you don't like it? <laughs> I'll take your ban. I don't care. I got things I could be doing besides being on Facebook. 
I could put my face in the book, the only book that matters, and learn how to combat people like you that are evil and won't, don't want the truth told. So that's what I have to say about that issue, folks. It's an issue near and dear to my heart. Like I said, God revealed that prophecy to me some years ago where all this stuff was headed. And sadly, sadly, it appears that that is exactly where it's going. And folks, we got to stand up and we got to fight against it. We got to speak up against it. We can't let it go because, like I said, our future generations are counting on us to keep them safe. And we have to do everything that we can. I, I, I will be damned if I will allow my grandson to fall victim to these, uh, these predators because that's what they are. They're nothing but predators. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not having it, folks. I'm not having it. And I'm not going to sit quietly by and be silent because I'm afraid of somebody either. I, I'm just not going to do it. I am not having this. So um, what can one man do? I don't know. What can a thousand men do? I don't know. But I do know this. When I get to the end of my days, I want to be able to stand in front of God and say that I did what I could to spread his, spread his message, to spread his love, and to tell the truth. And that I did not stand hand in hand with the forces of evil to spread the evil works of the devil. So, in the end, that's what, that's what matters, folks, and that's what we got to do. So, I'm going to leave that alone for right now. Uh, I'm going to give you guys some good news. Uh, it looks like I'm going to be here. People have been asking me and asking me and asking me and asking me. You're going to SHOT Show. You're going to SHOT Show. Yes, I am. I am going to SHOT Show in Las Vegas next year, January 23rd. Uh, I will be there. I will be speaking there. Uh, I am super excited. Uh, I've never been to, to one of these conventions. I hear they are absolutely fantastic, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, also, I'm still uh, working earnestly, uh, trying to get some town halls set up. Uh, if you are interested in having one of those come to your town, uh, please just send me a message either on Facebook or uh, on my website, uh, www.majoritymattersusa.com. So um, that's it for tonight, folks. Uh, that's my spiel. That's my that's 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 what I'm feeling. I, I really, like I said, was really. When I saw this second uh, video and saw this Good Morning Re America report uh, with them lauding this kid, uh, it just sickened me it, it, to, to the pit of my stomach. It really did. And uh, we really got to rally around. We really got to rally around to protect these children and, and stop this madness, folks. We have got to stop the madness. Uh, and I intend to speak up about this as much as I can and try to do as much as, much as I can about it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounded like, uh, well, that's, that's better than any sermon I've heard in a church in a long time. Uh, Mark may not be a pastor, but he certainly has a calling. And that just goes to show that God is going to use who he's going to use. Uh, I should have these scriptures on hand from Ezekiel where he's talking about Ezekiel is warning people uh, talking about the shepherds that were not faithful to their office the shepherds that got fat off of the sheep and didn't feed the sheep and all of this and you have people out there like a Mark Keith Robinson who is going to stand up with boldness and authority even when the shepherds are running away or just getting fat off the flock. So right now, I see we have one of the two guests here. Let's see who we have here. All right. What do I have, Mark or Lonnie? This is Lonnie. Lonnie, okay. We're just we're waiting for Mark. Now, did you get? Did you catch any of any of uh, Mark's <laughs> delivery? Yeah, I tried to comment on the uh, in the comment section or the chat room on the page, and for some reason it didn't like what I put in. So I must be doing something <laughs> wrong on my end. But anyway, I, I posted on point with exclamation point. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, looks like that's all looks Mark like we, looks like we got him on here. Uh, let's see, Mr. Robinson, is this you? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Very well. And Lonnie's also on the line 
uh, as well. All right, great. How you doing, Mr. Poindexter? Just fine, brother. Good to hear from another lion chaser out there speaking truth in these dark and evil days. Well, hey, hey you. Lonnie, that's I, you, Lonnie I don't think I don't know if he's a lion chaser. I think he's a lion slayer. <laughs> well, if you if you uh, read the full context of the scripture, not only did Benaiah chase that lion and be a pity, also slayed him mano a mano. <laughs> well, you know what? Before we jump into this, because I've been ever since I knew that both of you were going to be appearing, I've been so excited to have such great men of God uh, joining me today. So, if, uh, Mr. Mr. Fiery over there, um, Mr. Robinson, why don't you lead us in prayer before we get started? All right, let us pray. Uh, Lord, we pray for this uh, meeting of the minds that you have set up uh, in your name for today, Lord. Uh, Lord, we say a special prayer, Lord, for all the children in this nation, Lord, that uh, the evil people have uh, plans for to try to destroy, Lord. We pray, pray your protection around your, your uh, these children. We pray protection around the, the 10-year-old boy who's being used to push this wicked agenda. We pray for him, Lord. We pray for all the people who are being deceived by the, by the devil, who are being deceived by Satan. We pray for them that their eyes may be open so that they may fight the battle against the evil that's per- permeating our society, Lord. We pray for our nation. We pray for our president. We pray for all of our elected officials. This prayer we say in your name, O oh Lord, amen and amen. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Uh, wow. All right. Well, folks, let me do a proper introduction here. Because we have Lonnie, the lion chaser, Poindexter from uh, Urban Family Talk Radio. And we have Mark Keith Robinson, the mouth of the South, on with us today. That is bringing (laughs) forth, forth, uh, uh, let's say, um, uncensored dialogue that we're about to delve into, where no no, no feelings will be spared. The truth will be shed in abundance, and we're just going to let it rip. Uh, so if you got some people that you you love, you need to call them right now and tell them, turn on Politics and Prophecy on freedomizerradio.com, because this is going to be something that is going to bless a lot of people, and there are things that are afraid to be said in our society today that between the three men here, they're going to be said. So um, I'll start off, Mark, that I just want to tell you, even as I read or listened again, because obviously I listened to it last night, which spurred me to invite you on today. I mean, I just got my, I, I got goose pimples, man, because like I said, I haven't heard a sermon like that in a long time. And I know that the spirit of God, that anointing is strong upon you in order to speak with the power, the boldness and the authority that you're commanded. And I just want to just give you your credit, man, because uh, that was nothing but God speaking through you. And we need more righteous indignation from our men of God, rather than trying to pussyfoot around with people and spare their feelings uh, as if that's going to keep their tails from getting hot. For all eternity. Yeah, that that's absolutely right. That's one of the things that I was thinking about so much. It was on my mind so much yesterday, Chris. You know, we have, uh, you know, God has His structure uh, for how he, he He wants His His kingdom to operate and how He wants His church on this earth to operate. And you know, as as lay people, our, our most important mission as as lay people is, is prayer. That is that is our most. Uh, uh, that's our, our most effective tool is prayer, and I think that a lot of people uh, think that prayer is the only component of this thing, and it absolutely is not. Uh, for pastor, uh, uh, for pastors in this country, it goes uh, anywhere, wherever they may stand. It goes much farther than that, and that is one thing that is dismaying me more than anything in this nation right now. We talk uh, volumes about politicians not living up to their uh, uh, not doing their job so to speak we talk about how they mistreat their their uh, positions of authority and how they mistreat uh, how they misuse their their, ele- their elected uh, seats 
But what's more distressing in this country, Chris, is how pastors have forgotten their mission. Pastors in this country have forgotten their mission because uh, uh, there's far too many of them who believe that their mission is just to be nice to people, to fill the pews, to line their pockets, et cetera, et cetera. When their real mission is to be the agitators in this country, mm. when things mm. are, are happening that are not going right, when things are when, when wickedness rises up, they should be the first ones on the front line leading the charge against it. And it simply is not happening. Too many of them are weak back. Too many of them are afraid of being called names, losing membership. It is time we had some pastors to stand up and be real men, M-E-N, of God, and stand up and proclaim the truth. And it is not happening. And that's one of the saddest things in this nation, and it's affecting this nation uh, uh, adversely. I mean, greatly. Uh, many of the ills in our society right now are, 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 are take, have a stronghold on people simply because our churches and our pastors, more, more importantly, our pastors will not stand up and preach against these things and, and, and lead their people to stand up against it. Amen. Lonnie, go ahead and weigh in on this. Let me first of all just state uh, I'm over here in the amen corner doing my uh, holiness <laughs> crip walk. <laughs> Mark, I'm a Southern California boy. And the only thing good that came from that infamous gang, and they had the coolest dance you'd ever want to see. It's stop doing it. Has, uh, continued to, to, delay, to eloquently, um, and, and, and matter of factly, lay out the truth of what's uh, the core issue. Um, and it, someone once said, not sure who the quote comes from, but a people by and large gets the government that it deserves. And we deserve the, the, the mess that we have in the swamp because of we the faith-based community not standing up and being salt and light and, um, and, and, and preaching in, in, in the hallways of governance or stating truth in the hallways of governance. Now, front and center to that are the field generals in God's mighty army, which are the pastors. I have a unique relationship and uh, affection for the pastoral community. I feel that it's something that God has called me to do as a vocation and why he gave me a microphone is to speak to the pastoral community. Now, I'm not an ordained minister. I don't have a, a theology degree, or I have not been ordained as a pastor in church, but 99% of who I roll with are clergy. And my job is to be the stick that pokes the bear, is to poke them and prod them into doing exactly what you stated, Mark, exactly what you stated. When the clergy rises up and does what God has commanded them to do, the congregation falls in line. That's how any army operates when you have the generals call out the orders once they get the orders from on high. I'll give you a classic example of that, and I believe both you gentlemen are familiar with this. The Black Robe Regiment historically was involved in the forming and founding of this nation. This nation rose up and told King George, we've had enough, and stood up and propelled the community to go out there and fight. And so they literally had their sermons with their vestments on, completed their sermons, stepped from behind the pulpit, took off their choir, excuse me, their pastoral robes and vestments, and underneath they had on a full uniform, they took up their flintlocks, blunderbuss, uh, whatever they used back during that period of time, and they went out and fought the good fight of faith. And that's why we have an America today. Today we have pastors. They're nothing more than motivational speakers. This mm. your best life now, brother. Buy this book for nineteen ninety five. That's exactly right. That's well, exactly I was, to, I was going to say that uh, it just reminds me when I hear the passion that I I felt. Now I get into my feelings. I felt coming out of Mark's statements. I felt the Holy Ghost uh, speaking through him. I felt it. I knew that it was truth what he was speaking. And yes. like you said, you know, you're talking about <laughs> buy my book from 1995 and, and all of this. And that's what we're getting. Instead of getting uh, the word that will convict you, that will spur you to action, that will you know, make you want to do a crit walk uh, if, if you know how to do that. Uh, you know, those of us in Midwest, <laughs> where 
Yeah, I'm familiar up, with that. <laughs> you know, we go to Chicago and the Latin disciples or whatever those cats were and all of that. But uh, it's just amazing to me because when I was going to say about the scriptures, talking about that God will not pour new wine into old bottles, wine skins. I'm sorry, I'm using that, that was the change version. The uh, into new wine skins because you know the, if you pour new wine into old wine skins, it'll burst. And I see that God is rise is raising up people who have no titles behind their name except Son of God, and using them to speak mightily where the shepherds are neglecting their responsibilities and running away from the fight. You know, the generals are running away and the privates are standing there going mm-hmm. into the fire. That's what right. I'm seeing right now. Right. Lonnie, you want to comment on that? And then we'll go to you, Mark. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, I was jotting down some notes as you were speaking, brother. Um, your average pastor doesn't know his history, biblical mm-hmm. or otherwise, certainly for the history of this nation. And that is why, um, and I have, to, I have to admit that I was ignorant. I, I was taught on the black, about the Black Robe Regiment back in 2013 after I'd moved to D.C. by a pastor, a Bill Cook, who pulled me to the side and said, do you know about the Black Robe Regiment? I went, no. And he pointed me to some links and um, an organization he was involved in that began to study. I got excited because there's a righteous indignation that's always been in me when I see wrongdoing. And so mm-hmm. it gets stirred up. But now I can connect that righteous indignation to real history from a biblical standpoint and a historical standpoint in our nation that speaks to what pastors used to do. So when you hear a brother like Mark get up and speak, you get excited because that's what clergy used to do. It's what mm-hmm. Mark is doing from council meetings and in social media uh, is what pastors used to do. We've got to, we, the three of us collectively from our little bully pulpits, the platforms that God has given us, we have to poke them there. We have to encourage, poke, and prod them to rise up and do what God's called them to do. And if they don't, just as you stated, brother, those old wineskins won't work. There'll be some new ones. And I got a glimpse of this. I believe Mark, you did as well in Washington, D.C., when you had over 400 young black conservatives descend on D.C. And let me tell you something. They were fearless in speaking. Mm-hmm. They had come to understand as the truth and not even Roland Martin could handle them. <laughs> Mark, jump in. Yeah, uh, you know, I was thinking about that yesterday, Chris. And, and again, going back to this whole theme of the pastors not uh, fulfilling their mission, you know, the pastors, are, they're supposed to be shepherds. And, and, and they're not shepherds anymore. You know, it's too many of them that, that think that, uh, uh, that, the, that their only mission is to just, uh, be this person who's there to spread love and kindness and to pet the sheep on the head and tell the sheep how pretty they are and how good they are. And then they're completely forgetting the fact that you have a staff in your hand. And the reason mm. why you have that staff in your hand is so you can make war against anyone who would come in and do your, do your flock harm. And too Amen. many of our pastors are not taking up that staff and making war against people who are trying to do their uh, their flock harm. In fact, many of the pastors we have in this country today have made deals with those with the wolves <laughs> and mm. are selling off the parishioners one at a time, um, and and they're selling out their congregations for a few dollars. Uh, it, it, like I said, it's time for these pastors to, to get with it. I mean, for for us to be living in the age of information in this nation, when information flies at the speed, literally flies at the speed of light, for us to see something like what happened with this 10-year-old kid and not mm. one single solitary pastor on the national stage raise up and say one thing is ridiculous. It is Preach. outrageous. For none of them, none of these big pastors, none of Joel Osteen, none of them have raised up and said one thing about this. These pastors should be, they should be putting these folks on blast. But I put it to you that they're not because they are afraid. 
They are yeah. afraid of the so-called gay mafia or whatever you want to call it. They're afraid of the television cabal and, and those, those yeah. quote, powerful people in the media. They're afraid. They're afraid of losing their riches. They're afraid of losing their their uh, their, their mega churches. And and and, and it, it, to me, that goes to says one thing to me that they they have no faith whatsoever because I serve a God that that was that was that's able to save the entire world. As all the power of the world in it, right there in his hand can do whatever he wants to do. There's no man, no entity on this planet more powerful than the, powerful than the God I serve. So what do I have Amen. to be afraid of? What do I have to be afraid of? So I, I count it for them having absolutely no faith and 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 just being uh, just being derelict in their duties. Go ahead, Lonnie. I'm reminded that one man such 12 men who changed the world and that one man being Jesus. So one man takes a a stand, draws his line in the sand with the sword of truth, which is God's holy word. And you can bring about change. And Jesus himself said that we would do greater works than he, a scripture I've always struggled with because Jesus, wait a minute, you you died for us. But in terms of um, the ability to grow exponentially in stating truth, We've never, we've had an unprecedented opportunity to do this now. We live in this information age, as Mark mentioned, the ability to get the message out. Even with Facebook censoring and Google and all the foolishness that they're doing, we can still get the message out. The brash New Yorker that I affectionately call our president has figured it out, and they don't know what to do with him with all these tweets because he knows the tweets, he gets the message out to the people. We get the messaging out to the people. It will encourage the people to rise up and push back. But we've got to poke and prod these pastors. And like I said, gentlemen, um, like yourselves and myself, we not only believe in God, we're just crazy enough to believe in what God says. And so I'm going to go out and continue to do that. And it's really amazing. I've, I've met pastors that, um, let's say, um, prior to the 2016 election, they had never even voted before. They were of the yoke that they're just saving so many souls until Christ's imminent return and they're going to be raptured out of here. And I said, that's not scriptural. I said, I'm not doubting the rapture. I said, but that's not scriptural. Well, what, are you, what are you saying, Lonnie? I said, wait a minute. The Bible says we are to be fruitful and multiply. We're to occupy and possess the land. And Christ said, occupy until I return. Sounds like to me, oh, 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 wait a minute. And out of all the things that, that God could use to depict us and Jesus to depict us, he called us an army. He didn't call them mm-hmm. peaceniks. And what do armies do? Armies fight. We're supposed to fight until Christ's triumphant return. Because he's going to return to a triumphant church when he arrives on the scene again. But we can't be sitting back with our bags packed waiting for Jesus to come at the train station. And that's what I get from a lot of clergy. But it's based on their ignorance. They don't know their history. If we educate them on their history and biblical and otherwise, and like I said, that's what our job is the three of us on the phone today, because we're rabble rousers. We can say things that a lot of pastors don't want to say, but maybe we can provoke them into saying it because we're saying it. Well, let me say that the yep. kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Uh, Preach. And then boy, I want to share this with the audience here. I want to ask the two of you for your patience here because I'm in Ezekiel 34. And it says, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophecy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophecy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do not feed them, that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The diseased have ye not strengthened. Neither have ye healed that which was sick. Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field. Even they were scattered. Yeah. Sheep wandered yeah. through all the mountains and upon every hill. Every high hill, yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock. 
but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not the flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. And I'll just stop there, but it goes on. Yes. Mark? Yeah. Um, that's exactly it, Chris. That, that, yeah, that's exactly it. That is uh, that is what I was saying uh, about these pastors. Uh, you know, our churches in this country uh, have they've completely, I mean, completely lost their way. Uh, I have become so uh, frustrated uh, with with uh, folks in this country that call themselves Christians that just don't understand the basic tenets uh, of this of this uh, uh, of Jesus Christ. I just don't understand it. They don't understand. If, you know, one of the things you hear so often is you know about judging, 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 mm-hmm, judging, mm-hmm. judging. You know, everybody mm-hmm. says judge not, and, and they always leave off the other part, lest you be judged. Mm-hmm. Because I'm willing to be judged for what I do wrong, because Amen. that is the, that's one of the basic tenets of Christianity, is that we have to submit ourselves to be judged for what we do wrong. But yes, it is it is absolutely the core of Christian wisdom that we judge the works and fruits that are being put out by others, that mm-hmm. we do not fall prey and fall victim to the schemes of wicked men. We have to judge what people do every day. We make judgments every day on who we're going to befriend, who we're going to hang out, places we are going to go. And there's nothing wrong by their actions. There's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with judging a group of people who would who would abuse a child by having them dress uh, in, in women's clothes, a boy child in women's clothes and having them dress sexually in front of grown men. There's nothing wrong with judging those people. They are committing an egregious act, and they need to be judged here on earth to protect that child. If we do not do it, we let that child fall prey to to uh, to these uh, perverts. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's exactly the thing where we're going to have to, uh, a regiment of men are going to have to rise up and uh, and protect the flock. That's what it's going to well, Hold on, gentlemen. Jelly bag people are just going to move out of the way. What I was, I was going to address to you, Lonnie, is that, you know, we're talking about the responsibility of the, the pulpit. Now, I want to get to the sheep. As far as, you know, Lonnie, you're, you are familiar with the uh, Good Morning America uh, um, clip that we're talking about, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, those people, these adults, which was really got me, that's what got me fired up, was when this child comes walking out and these men, not one man stood up and, you know, was like, hey, said, this is wrong, whatever, you know, cause a commotion like that. This, we got nothing. And that's where I was really upset that the people, these and, and I would imagine some of them in the audience probably claim to be Christians. I, I, I almost guarantee you that. What is it in our American culture right now, as we, in 2018, that is allowing people to fall for this diversion, the, the diversity? It's a diversion, all right. Um, the diversity and all of this to allow people to sit up and cheer on these men dress like women, and then celebrate this child being sexualized and perverted. The faith-based community, most folks believe in God. There's a big difference between believing in God and actually believing in what he says, because believing in what he says requires you to risk something. Most people don't want to offend. They have fallen prey to the false doctrine of tolerance and inclusion. And you notice from that boy walking out there sauntering out in a sexual manner, even fell out on the floor and simulated uh, just beyond a sexual position. And I watched that and my jaw hit the cake. I, mean, you know, I shouldn't be shocked by any of this, but I'm still shocked. 
And then he mm-hmm. got up and went on, and then he got hugs from um, both of the show hosts, including Michael Strahan. We'll and uh, I looked at and you can tell that Michael Strahan was not comfortable in that environment with what he saw, but he didn't do anything. I watched his facial expression. I watched the audience applaud. And it reminded me of, and you gentlemen, I'm sure you'll remember this, um, the ESPN a few or the ESPY awards a few years ago, where Bruce Jenner walked out as a transvestite and got the Arthur Ashe Award for Courage. Mm-hmm. And I remember them panning to the audience and looking at all those football personalities and greats from from either the current era or, or uh, bygone era. You could see them squirming in their seats, yet no one said anything. In fact, no one got up and walked out. So that's where we are. Nobody wants to offend. Nobody wants to be offensive. Everybody wants to be inclusive. They have no problem um, not offending anyone except God and what God's statutes are. And and that's what I took away from when I looked at that and I shook my head. Michael Strahan, if I could be blunt here, if he had any waver, spiritual and otherwise, at all, should have said something, even if it meant that, hey, guess what, guys, on this particular segment, I'm sitting this one out. I mm-hmm. would not be on stage. But he didn't mm-hmm. do that because he's acquiesced to popular culture. He likes them big mm-hmm. paychecks. And you see he himself, his masculinity erode every time he does an episode of those shows. But uh, Good Morning America is indicative of the pulse of America because so many millions of people watch yes. that Cotton Picking show. I, I won't watch it. Um, but yeah. mm-hmm. nobody wants to raise a ruckus to say that. And until we get some, uh, as Mark was saying, we get some of the so called leaders within the faith based community to rise up. Well, if they, if they don't do that, God's going to rise up a new generation. And I see the mark in the young people that are come, that came to D.C., mm-hmm. um, like the Candace Owens and so forth. God's going to rise them up and have somebody raise a standard that's bold enough to say just what the truth is. That's exactly yeah, right. right. Mark, uh, we got about two I, minutes for the break. Go ahead and chip in. Well, I, I tell you real quick, uh, here's, my, here's what I think about it in a nutshell. I think that uh, it has been a slow road. Uh, slow roast to this. Uh, it's been increasing uh, more and more. Uh, in my day, uh, we tolerated things that we should not have tolerated. While people were screaming, men of God were screaming. Uh, back in the back in the fifties, they were screaming against Elvis Presley, and in the sixties, they were screaming against the Beatles, and they were telling us where we would end up. And we've ended up in that place now because we did not listen to the men of God in the pulpits back then. Unfortunately, yeah. there are no men in the pulpits left preaching the truth we've run them out of the arena so i'm going to put it to you like this chris i i i wrote this once uh a little while ago and i'm going to tell you what i wrote i wrote today's citizen who ignores the homosexual agenda and the left and leftist liberalism will be tomorrow's conservative forced to fight pedophilia and socialism Hmm. i guarantee it many of the people who are ignoring what's going on today will have it slap them dead in the face unfortunately, when they get to be my age and their grandchildren are faced with these perverts and they feel helpless because they can't do anything about it because laws have been changed and social mores have been changed uh, behind their backs while they weren't paying attention. So as far as the sheep go, so to speak, it's time for us to stand up as well. Yeah, it's kind of, you guys take a pit stop, um, go, go to the Go to the pit stops and uh, we, have folks, you are listening to Mark Keith Robinson, Lonnie Poindexter, and myself, Chris Lovell, on Politics and Property. And we're going to continue talking about the subject of child exploitation when we return on the other side of this break. So don't go anywhere. All right, folks, you're back with me, Chris Lovells, on with my guest, Mark. Keith Robinson of MajorityMatters.com and Lonnie Poindexter from UrbanFamilyTalk.com. These are two wonderful gentlemen who I am proud to know, and we're we're not holding back talking about what's going on in our society with the child exploitation, perversion, and sexualization. And even though we're focusing on one individual what happened on Good Morning America, make no mistake, this is a problem throughout society. 
And uh, right now, we're going to allow the caller that uh, to come in and and let him join this conversation. See what he has to say. Caller, what's your comment and your question? Yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, I guess I want to look at this from all angles. So I guess I I hope you'll kind of um, allow me to have a couple different point of points of points of views. I think um, the reason a lot of this stuff is occurring now is we just live in an age of information where, where honestly, I think people are able to make more educated judgments about what's actually going on, right? I think if you look historically at um, religion and, and, you know, especially how you want to take a, a viewpoint on it, it was historically used as um, a tool to keep lower class citizens engaged in believing that there was some sort of an afterlife that made this current life not mean anything, right? So whatever economic conditions that they were actually dealing with, really whatever a particular colonizer or conqueror or someone wanted them to continue to perpetuate or actually believe, the power of having them not really believe that this life was the okay, one that call mattered. It, call it, call it. We're not yeah. on. We're not on the historical data. We're on childhood. No, 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 exactly. What's going on? So, right. And so, what I want to tie into this, right, is I think that if you look at kind of the way the information age is adapting, our understanding of multiple universes, where our place really is in the universe and see that kind of the story that was told X number of thousands of uh, years ago is quite literally inapplicable to modern life and modern understanding and is no more than a book, a Harry Uh, Potter, if you will. People are now more willing to um, just live their lives as they want to on this earth because there is nothing guaranteed after I know there's an argument. Okay, what's, no that, what's, what's that got to do happen. with perverting the innocence of a child? Well, because what you're judging perversion off of is off of a book. There are millions of books. If I read Harry Potter and decided to take it as literally as you're taking the Bible, then I would be calling you muggles and saying that you're the worst because you're not wizards. And as ridiculous as that sounds, how is it different from... Okay, so you think it's okay for a 10-year-old boy or a 4-year-old boy, you think it's okay for them to be married to a, a, a 40-year-old man? That's that's okay with you? Oh, I don't know what you... You think I, a child I, I has the capacity to two, make that decision? Are you talking about two gay men that are married, or are you talking about a 10-year-old married to a 40-year-old? I said a 10-year-old boy with a 40-year-old man. Do you think that's okay? You think you need... No, of course uh, There's not. no context? Of course not. That's terrible. That's so terrible. you're making a of judgment. You're making a judgment um, on that, right? Yeah, but the judgment is more that as a 10-year-old, if any of us think back to being a 10-year-old, you don't have the mindset to understand your actions or the world. You could, and, and if you're making decisions that actually can cause yourself future consequences then it's up to people who understand what adult thought process is like to step in and stop that from occurring. I'm not super familiar with the story you're talking about, but obviously there are laws in place to stop such a thing. How was that public? Actually, there was. Based on the laws it, it, of the United it, States? Because How is that not, able to then, happen based off the laws of the United States? Well, that's what we're talking about. This child that was in a strip club with money being thrown at him, this, that, and the other, and the police did nothing to stop this. This is one of the problems that we're talking about the moral breakdown in America, where you say that, where do you, uh, where do you think that morals come from, or do you think there is such a thing as morals? I certainly think there's such a thing as actual morals. Um, you know, I think there are there are easier ones to understand than others. I mean, I guess I would be, I would, I would be. This is this is such an easy example, though. I guess you know, I think if we're going to have a conversation about morals, it, it definitely requires a much more complicated example than this, which is, I think, so clearly not 
okay, I guess, would be the best way to put that. But for many reasons. And how do you come to that conclusion? How do you come to that conclusion that it's not okay? Well, because you're taking an uh, unmature mind who is not capable of making educated choices for himself um, or understanding the long-term consequences of such a, such a choice and exposing him to things that require a more mature mindset. And if you're not giving someone a fair chance to actually make a decision and have a choice themselves to say yes or no to something – in a way that that is educated and in a way that they have a legitimate control over, moralistically, I don't feel that's correct. And where do you think you get that conscience from? Evolution, human nature. Evolution. And who created human nature? The Big Bang. I mean, come on, guys. Like, there's that... Do you do you really believe the Earth has been around for twenty five hundred years? I mean, come on. Uh, Mark, Mark, there's a, there's a, Mark hey, Alani, do you believe that the Earth has been around Chris, for twenty five hundred years? I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to talk about that. Well, the only thing I want to say to this caller is this: uh, you have a situation that has bought into fruition what many people like me have been saying for many years, and folks like this fellow have been denying for many years, and that is this that there is a group of people out there that are pushing to change society so that they can do things that are unsavory and, and just downright not moral, immoral things to children who abuse them yeah, and freeze just, themselves. And in this I just, case, I just, okay, hold on, because I listened to everything ahead, you ahead. said. And I want to I I I nail this down. In this case, you had hundreds of people Adults in a nightclub, hundreds who allowed it and said nothing and did nothing to stop it. And then you had hundreds of people on a major television network going out to millions of people who promoted it. And they did nothing. If you think that we are not on the road to total depravity, where children and adults will live in a world that is unsafe because perverts are given license to commit acts of rape against children and other folks, you are out of your mind. There is a moral standard that we have in this world, and whether you want to believe it or not, it comes from the word of God. And when you abandon it, you get what we have now. It's being I guess, yeah. People have been saying so, it for, for hundreds of years, and people like you don't believe it. But you can believe this. Because you can abandon that here's, so-called here's, here's, book all you want to. But you will reap this, what you are sowing. And what you are sowing it, is a harvest. What you are sowing is seeds of perversion, and what you will reap is a harvest of horrors. You can count on it. Right. So it's strong. It's strong a language applied to a certain subject. Right. The reality. That's what is, we're talking about. Way, child the, exploitation. The way, that's the the way, I, I get it. But it is when you're talking about you're taking a very insular subject and you're applying it to an extremely broad outcome. Right. So if you're going to apply it to that broad of an outcome, you're going to have yeah. to put things into certain context. Right. Do I yeah. believe uh, well, this no, is a what good we have thing? To, no, I, what we have well, to put okay, in the context. Me, we have to put in the context, context is, is this: a, a man like me will never sit silent and watch while perverts rape children, ever, ever. But don't you it realize that happen. by placing? But don't you realize that by placing your focus on this generally fantastical not, that's, that's not um, my, trust me, nature. Trust me, sir. So you're overlooking that is not a lot of the focus. core issues. That, that is but not my you, only focus. Okay. But what, but what about, okay, and I get this, but do you really think that that is what is going to destroy America before basically the fact that we've all allowed data tracking devices into our homes to listen and understand everything that is happening while allowing so that, tech corporations, that is, un, like, you're, that is, you're, you're missing the issue We are not talking about the destruction of America. 
We're not talking about the destruction of America. We're talking about the destruction of individual souls. Now, I know you may not believe that. This is not about destroying America. This is about Satan casting a net and capturing people's souls. Now, I know that sounds funny to you. It sounds crazy to you. But that's what it's about. And I'm not ashamed to say it. And I'll say it to anybody. Because like I said, the prophecies that people have been, been preaching for so many decades about the decadence, the slow decline of decadence that's happened in this, just in this nation alone is finally starting to show. And now people still want to deny it. After seeing what we just saw, there Mark, be hold on, hold on. outrage over Mark, there. And there's Mark, not. hold on. I want to I wanna allow Lonnie to chime in here, what he's got to say. Morals come from someplace. Morals set standards for how society operates and conducts itself. Laws come from morals. Morals come from absolutes. There is no relativity. There is no evolution that determines what morals are. Morals are subsets set by something or somebody that has an understanding of how things should work in the world. There's no Big Bang. You can't even explain a Big Bang. You can't say 2,500 years ago because the Earth is older than 2,500 years ago. Scripture, the Bible, shows that the Earth is more than 6,000 years old. The Earth so, is millions oh, and millions of years old. No, no, this, you can't prove that. You can't prove that. Yes, you can you go to can. scientists. You can no, you can't. No, you, no, you can't. You can't, no, you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. Oh, hold, hold on, hold on. I allowed you to speak, and we all okay. allowed you all right. to speak. So right. now it's my right. turn. I've been right. patient. Okay. I, I can point out just as many scientists as you can in scientific studies that point to the real age of the Earth versus what popular science says today, which is always subjective. It's always based on theory. It's not based on fact. It's being purported as fact by popular culture today, but there's just as much. There's scientific proof that we all emanated from two people. You can use today's popular science that proves that. So okay, if, morals come from, okay, so if morals come from someplace, and they do, you can't pull them out of thin air. The moral compass that you have comes from your upbringing, comes from the society that you live in. You live in a society, and I'm assuming you're an American. You live in a society that's built upon a Judeo-Christian ethic. So your moral fabric and base at some point comes from that fabric. That's how you determine what's right and what's wrong. That's why you know in your heart and hearts a 10-year-old boy dressed up as a transvestite and a drag queen um, um, dancing suggestively and doing sexual poses in front of a, a, a bar full of, of rowdy men and them throwing money at him and then him duplicating that on a national television show with millions of listeners, you know inherently that is wrong. Where does that come from? It comes, comes from moral absolute. That's what we're talking about here, and that's why we're up in arms, and that's why we're speaking against it. And what Mark was laying out for the world to hear is that this has been in play for some time. Let's, let's, let's put, let me put the head on this. When they, made, when they made homosexuality not a sexual deviancy, but they made it an orientation. It set the path going forward for today. You have a young 10-year-old boy stripping or simulated stripping in front of a bunch of men in a bar. On the road to the next threshold for that is pederasty and pedophilia, which are already testing mm -hmm. the waters on. As soon as they make mm -hmm. it a sexual orientation, that's what we're mm -hmm. dealing with. How you determine then, sir, what's right and wrong? You would say it's all mm -hmm. relative, it all depends upon your context that you're in based on what society says. That is what we're facing today, gentlemen. Uh, yeah, that, that's that, it. That's it, exactly. That's you exactly, know, that, well, that's exactly what we're facing. We're facing a bunch of people who who uh, are talking, who want to talk about how old the earth is. Uh, I'm 50 years yeah. old, <laughs> and uh, I don't know how long I was here before I got here, and I don't know how long it'll be before uh, after I leave. So it really doesn't matter to me. What matters mm -hmm. to me are the principles that help me to become a better human being and will Amen. help me to lead this world better than I found it. And That's I it. know for sure 
that what's being pushed in our society today is not the answer. Yeah. And people like Lonnie, those guys just you guys call it. Love the money up the ahead, water man. with those kind of stuff, that kind of stuff, but that's not the issue. I was going to say, I wanted to give you the final word because we got about four, we got about four minutes here, uh, and give you the final word on on your commentary about what you uh, feel about, like I said, that kind of mentality and what we're up against. Well, that mentality is what we're dealing with in society today because we produced a generation, close to two generations of, of worker bees and robots who believe what was drummed into them in the public school system. He's a public mm. school. <laughs> it's mm. obvious. And um, it, it comes out in his, um, his thought process and how he thinks things. But his, his, what determines what he thinks is immoral is based on what we're talking about, but he doesn't even realize that. And I get mm-hmm. that often. You know, the whole 2,500 years old, I go, well, okay, he's taking the Bible and I'm not understanding this B.C. and, uh, <laughs> and A.C. <laughs> the, Bible, you know, the earth is, depending on who you talk to, around 6,000 years old. But just like Mark said, who cares ultimately how old the earth is? Um, God's word is true. And the Bible confirms true science, not junk science, but true science. Mm-hmm. And anyone yes. that, and, and I wanted to throw this at him before he got off the phone, but I'll say it for your listeners out there. The founder of the Weather Channel, the founder of the Weather Channel, has deemed climate change as junk science. The founder mm-hmm. of the Weather Channel. Yet, any of these young people you talk to today think climate change is gospel. Absolutely. It's ridiculous. Cow farts. It's yeah, ridiculous. I know. It is. But it, okay, well, Lonnie, give out your information and then Mark, follow him up with how people can follow you and how they can reach you. Sure, sure. First of all, I'm going to extend an invitation to Mark to get you back on my show. Then we have <laughs> a ball when you're on. And so I'm putting you on, putting you on blast right now. You've got to come back on the show. Secondly, you can catch my show Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern time zone on urbanfamilytalk.com. That's urbanfamilytalk.com. It's a two-hour show. The title is Lion Chasers with Lonnie Poindexter. You can also catch us on radio towers throughout the country uh, where we have uh, coverage, and you can find that on the website as well at urbanfamilytalk.com. Go ahead, Mark. All right, and uh, me, you can find me, of course, on, on Facebook. Uh, Mark Keith Robinson is my Facebook page, uh, and then I have two other Facebook pages. I have uh, I Am the Majority, uh, and I have uh, Majority Matters USA on Facebook. I also yeah. have a website. Uh, it's www.majoritymattersusa. A, make sure you put that USA on the end, majoritymattersusa.com. You can go there, view the content that's on there, and I also have a donate button on there. Uh, so uh, I would appreciate that uh, very much. Uh, it takes money to uh, fulfill this mission, and I, I appreciate any donations, uh, no matter how big or small. So uh, yes, that's where you can find me. Well, then, gentlemen, I want to thank you for blessing myself as well as my audience. And I'm just grateful that or that God has allowed me to know the both of you. And I just want to wish you a great evening and stay out of trouble on the West Coast out there, Lonnie. Um, for real. <laughs> so, uh, and thanking you for your gracious gift of time, both of you. God bless both of you. I look forward to speaking to you in the future. Thank you. All right. Thank Merry you. Christmas to you both. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to all of you all as well. All right. Bye-bye now.